Hello everyone, welcome to America's Third Party. This is Conspiracy Monday and today we're going to talk about the Illuminati exposing what I believe is the underbelly of their plan and ultimately taking a look at what they're doing or are they doing something to people eliminating them. In fact we might as well call this video the Illuminati video because some of these people that I'm going to be presenting tonight probably didn't kill themselves. In fact, most of them probably didn't kill themselves. Perhaps even all of them didn't kill themselves. We're going to be talking about a phenomenon called suiciding, where people are made to look like they killed themselves, when in fact they were just fighting for freedom, fighting for what mattered most, the truth. And many Americans have been uh, led to believe that this entire two-party system is an illusion of freedom is an illusion of democracy when we've got the left and the right fighting each other daily the budget they can't solve the budgetary crisis they can't come to any real solutions well that's all by design that's actually something that they've created and they start wars too simply to fund the military industrial complex Eisenhower warned us about that in the 1950s let me play a video of him right now. You can take a look at what his words of warning were. Of an immense military establishment and a large arms industry is new in the American experience. The total influence, economic, political, even spiritual, is felt in every city, every state house, every office of the federal government. We recognize the imperative need for this development. Yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. Now Eisenhower was a very good president and warned us about how this industrial complex was going to enlarge and now with Barack Obama doing their bidding, endorsing the $662 billion plan to spend on the military with NDAA and further eroding our rights individually. We are truly seeing what Eisenhower warned us about, the size of the military industrial complex. And with these wars coming, we're also seeing the dangers of the growth of this military industrial complex. The possibility that uh, we are going to see another war is very real. We are seeing globalists, elitists run the world, kind of like uh, none other than Henry Kissinger. The one elitist that you'd wonder, why would this guy be in charge of foreign policy back when he was Secretary of State under Richard Nixon, but also more recently when he was the special assistant to the president under Barack Obama. Now mind you, Kissinger was working for the Republicans under Nixon and now he's working for the Democrats under Obama. Well therein lies the interwoven connection between the left and the right and how they're all working together for the same cause which is essentially a new world order controlled by this mega machine the military industrial complex but really the people who pull the strings behind government are the ones that spend tons of money on elections the ones who pay fifty thousand dollar a plate for a dinner for Barack Obama or anyone he's running against these are the people running the powerful machine behind us. And we're looking at a very old picture from 1616 that was drawn called the two pantaloons. But I'm using it to illustrate the interplay between the left and the right and how it's molding this illusion of freedom and democracy, which is something I think all of us, whether you are a Republican or a Democrat, have to understand that is secretly being played, much like uh, a charade or some sort of a facade. They say in the old days that people were manipulated with bread and circus. Bread and circuses were basically put out there for people to, you know, eat a little bread because it was cheap and circuses were there to keep people amused while the king worked secretly behind the scenes to control the economy of any monarchy. Well, that's essentially what they're doing right now. They're doling out our fast food to all of us who are addicted to it because it has GMOs in it and it gives us some sort of a high when we eat the wheat. It creates an opiate that makes us want to eat more. So most of us are eating about 600 calories more per day unless we're trying to watch our, their weight. Our, my weight, obviously, 
I have to continually watch because I'm running for president. But for many people, it's an addiction to eat the, the bread that they give us. And the circuses, oh my God, today we're looking at uh, media that has a never-ending flow. You've got video on demand, you've got uh, free porn, you've got gaming, you've got all kinds of things to keep you diverted, much like a circus kept people diverted in olden times from thinking about actively trying to challenge the, the hierarchy or the kingdom of the monarch. Well, essentially the New World Order is a monarchy that has been rebranded. They were running out of new things to do, so they thought they'd create a global world government. And they're doing just that. They're building this entire plan to control us. And Obama has brought change, yes, but it isn't the kind of change that you would expect. It's change where they're watching us. They're even telling us they're watching us. They're saying, yes, we're watching you. And they've even gone so far as to be bold and say, yes, we're doing it. In fact, we're going to get away with doing it. The Republicans and the Democrats are both in favor of the NSA watching our domestic phone trans transmissions as well as our email. The APs monitoring uh, are being monitored by the Justice Department. Uh, all the, the free press outlets in the mainstream media are completely controlled by censors. Oh yeah, we got change all right. We even have 20,000 drones flying over our heads soon. That's coming. But this is in no way that the change that we'd expect. We want something much better. We wanted a transparent president with Barack Obama, but we didn't get one. He worked secretly with the powers in Wall Street to conspire, to continue to print up money recklessly to the point where our nation truly is bankrupt. And they just have to configure some sort of solution that pretends like it's not and then all of a sudden they'll start a, start a war and then blame it on the war to cover the bankruptcy. But all of this has been foreseen by our leaders and many of them have been killed for what they know and what they have revealed. I can think of uh, RFK, Robert F. Kennedy, when he actually got on the phone with LBJ and talked to him about the project that they had called Monarch which was a, a project designed to kill world leaders. And he asked him specifically if that would be used against Americans. Listen to this video, it's very powerful. I understand that you know, we send all kinds of reports over to you to, about me and about the Department of Justice. Not any that I've seen. Well, I just understand that, but uh, he's about the planning and plotting things. But he hasn't he sent me any report on you or on the department, any time. Well, I had understood that he had, that he had, had uh, sent reports over about me no, plotting no. the overthrow of the government by force and violence. No, no, Leading no, to no, no, that's... that's LBJ outwardly denied anything like that, and I must tell you, even President Kennedy talked about secret societies in his famous secret society speech. Let's play a little bit of that. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and the secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweigh the dangers which are cited to justify it. Indeed. In fact, uh, what we are dealing with today is the aftermath of one cover-up after another by our government. And ultimately, we are going to have to sort it all out. And that's why this uh, third party campaign has has really been perhaps the the only unifying factor to prevent the overseeing takeover of our country by this group the central intelligence agency a group that has no oversight by our government no one's looking at monitoring it and it says here william casey the former cia director said we'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes 
is false. Now think about that. Think about the simple fact that if we allow this organization, this agency, which by the way has become the disinformation source for a lot of facts or factoids, uh, the story they spun about Benghazi turned to be false. The story they talked about WMDs in Iraq turned to be false. Everything they seem to talk about seems to either be false or made up in their art department. I mean, I seriously doubt that we got Osama bin Laden in Abbottabad because we've never seen a picture of Osama bin Laden's dead body. We've never seen credible DNA evidence studied by a third party scientific study. And we've ever seen his body being thrown overboard the Carl Vinson. And you're telling me that everybody on board an aircraft carrier didn't have a digital camera to take a picture of his white sheet clad body as it's thrown overboard? But they had an animation ready to go right out of the hopper within a few minutes of, of the Abbottabad takeover. So all of that's very suspicious. And then we continue to hear stories from the CIA about Al Qaeda. In fact, just last week, a couple weeks ago, uh, Donald Trump uh, tweeted a message saying that 31 agents, CIA agents, were on the ground when Ambassador Chris Stevens was killed. And that story instantly got covered up by a, a release in the press that Al Qaeda was made, show, posing a major problem and they were shutting down 21 embassies. Well, within two days, they opened up all the embassies. But the story about 31 Al Qaeda or rather CIA agents being on the ground disappeared and the fact is our country had funded Al-Qaeda to overthrow Muammar Gaddafi and those rebel troops received missiles from our country that they are then taking up to Syria and using there. The very same rebel Al-Qaeda forces that took over Muammar Gaddafi are now transferring missiles to the war in Syria and now Barack Obama wants to continue supporting those rebels in the name of democracy, we're really misled here. Our entire nation has made an about turn and we're seemingly supporting Islamic revolutions under Barack Obama. This is not where we're supposed to go. And I have a feeling that even the CIA is a little confused and disturbed by the spin that's happened since all of these things have been playing out almost recklessly. So I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, the, the downside of all of this. The downside is we need to expose whoever or whatever this is hiding behind the dark circles in Washington. We need to expose if this is truly the Illuminati or whatever that is, if it's a metaphor for something, we need to expose what it is and we need to get to the bottom of it because a third party is going to have to spearhead truth, honesty, and a reformation of some sort. Now granted, I'm not going to be able to get rid of all the corruption in this country, and I'm realistic about that. But I do believe that if we begin looking at everything realistically, the American people are ready to, to, to take an about turn in their foreign policy and look at creating peace opportunities around the world, as opposed to forcing wars upon other nations that we don't need to be involved in. You see, America really never needed to be the 911 police force around the world. We can be a country under ourselves to a certain degree. I don't mean an isolationist nation, but a nation that protects its industries, protects its jobs. We don't need to be the pawn of globalist world authorities like the IMF and the, and the World Bank. Now let's talk briefly about uh, some of the people that have died trying to expose the underbelly of the Illuminati. One person who comes to mind is a person by the name of Bill Cooper. William Cooper, let's take a look at this guy. He wrote a book, Behold the Pale Horse, in which he talked about the, the very same thing I'm discussing. The plans of the global elitists to dominate and control the world and ultimately try to depopulate the earth by as much as 90%. These were very bold statements he was making and he started to associate with the wrong people and gradually he was charged with tax evasion, etc, etc. The police moved in on him and he had an armed gun battle in which he died. Now, I'm not sure if that gun battle was uh, by design, intended to, to take him out or not, but the fact is he was a truth seeker, a truther if you will, who predicted the 9-11 attack 
in his book, Behold the Pale Horse. So when somebody does something of that nature, you wonder, is this, is this real? I mean, is this guy really capable of, of damaging America, of damaging our credibility around the world? Well, apparently he was capable of doing that, and he was eliminated. And then we have other people along the way, uh, like a guy named uh, Phil Schneider. Now, his story is even weirder. Let me bring his photo up for you. Phil Schneider was a person who actually worked as an engineer and had some of the highest clearances this country offers in area like Area 51. He worked at Area 51. He claimed to be one of the engineers who developed that whole section. And he talked about some fantastic things that are really almost unbelievable in nature. Let me play a little clip of his that did get revealed. And by the way, I'll tell you more about what happened to Phil Schneider in a second when I, after I play his clip. Uh, technology is so just basically the new technology we get is the old hat of the military. I'm going to be real brief about it. I carried a level one security clearance, the Riley 38 factor. There are very few of us. There's nobody except myself, to my knowledge, talking like this. Nobody. I'm breaking the law. I'm breaking world as well as federal law. I'm coming out and even talking about this to a group of people. I love my country more than I love my life. Two weeks ago, I was shot in the shoulder. I don't want to gore you women out, but I was shot in the shoulder up here. I recently have become friends of a of a uh, retired FBI agent who took me under the wing. He says, I've never seen a person braver than you. And I said, well, there's more coming. Our patriot movement in these United States is going to pick up the ball, and we are going to kick the parasites out. Well, that was good news from a guy who's now six feet under. You see, dead men can't talk, and Phil Schneider was found with a garden hose wrapped around his neck multiple times. And the autopsy report on his death is one of the most confusing things of all. Uh, one said he died from a strangulation, another said he died from a coronary, another said he uh, died from an embolism, another said he didn't, they didn't know what, what killed him. But when you see a person dead with a garden hose around their neck, you know that they've been garroted. So, that being the, the case, this man spoke the truth, went out on a limb with his security clearances, and was terminated because he was perhaps too dangerous of a person for the, uh, the government to allow. Gone. Terminated. Well, that would be nice if that was the end of it, if, if the list just didn't continue, but the list does continue. And it gets worse and worse as we go along, and that's why I'm dedicating this time to exposing what I believe could very well have been uh, murders. Any one of these. Take, for example, Vince Foster. Vince Foster was the guy who uh, worked closely with the, the Clintons. He was their personal attorney. Uh, Vince Foster was a guy who uh, probably wouldn't have blown his brains out. But the circumstances around his murder are very, very, very disturbing. Oh, by the way, it was called a suicide. And it happened right when the Clintons were being investigated for Whitewater, and, and that whole story of Whitewater was lying in the background. And you wonder if Vince Foster was not murdered just because he knew too much. But, I don't know. I don't know about you, but if you were given a, a job at the White House, working for the president and his wife as an attorney, uh, would you want to kill yourself? Seriously. I mean, nobody could be that depressed. I mean, gosh, he had a job like that working for the White House. Chances are he didn't kill himself. But you can certainly look up the information about Vince Foster. Well, the list goes on and on. I mean, we've got uh, people more recently, like uh, Deborah Palfrey, Washington, D.C. madam. Deborah Palfrey 
spoke openly about how she would never ever commit suicide. She even said that a few days before she was found dead in her shed out back with a rope wrapped around her neck. She was on Alex Jones saying openly that she would not kill herself. She is no longer here. And by the way, she said she had information that could have exposed a lot of people behind the, the World Trade Center attack. That's another example of how this whole thing gets weirder and weirder as we go. Well, we've got other people too. And that's just not, that's not the end of it. I mean, it continues going and going and going. We've got Nancy Schaefer. I'm going to show you her picture. Georgia State Senator. She was found completely shot in the back and her, and her husband shot himself in the stomach according to police reports. They claimed this Christian woman and her Christian husband somehow had a murder-suicide. And this was just days before she was about to release a book exposing Child Protective Services and a hidden child sex ring as high as Washington DC gone dead in her home and believe me there's a lot of reasons why you want to want to look into this case because the guy that was going to do the video on her all that information's gone she was actually going to do a complete reveal on CPS and it's all been hush hush put away so Nancy Schaefer gone dead she and her husband murder suicide yeah uh, I don't know if I can believe that either that's still a stretch and then of course more recently we have Aaron Schwartz a young man 26 years old his fiance said that he was in good spirits the day he was found hanging in his home he was gonna face charges uh, criminal charges up to 30 years in prison so you know it might go to to the extent of stretching the idea that maybe he killed himself because he's going to be facing 30 years in prison but according to his fiance he was looking forward to fighting uh, for his right to freely share information this is the young man that brought us rss feeds and reddit.com and all kinds of things like the strong box a way in which you can uh, send information and secure it on the internet the nsa doesn't want that kind of thing available to you they want to look into everybody's lives and penetrate the inner circle of your personal life. Aaron Schwartz was a really a good guy and it, you know it's kinda hard to believe that, that he's gone especially after you know such a short life and such a brilliant young man. But there's other people too it just it goes on and on I mean he's gone it's, who else can we talk about oh yeah here's Mark Madoff the son of Bernard Madoff, you know the guy who made off with $70 billion right after the 2008 mortgage debacle? Bernard Madoff is serving a, uh, like a life sentence in prison, but his son, Mark, he didn't have any charges against him, but he was about ready close to testifying in a, in a hearing. Would have been very revealing what he knew, especially about all the transfers his father made through Morgan Stanley. And by the way, Morgan Stanley's never been prosecuted either. But Mark was found in his apartment with a dog leash around his neck and his two-year-old son in the other room. Oh yes, and he had $32 million in the bank. Is that enough for a person to kill themselves? Think about it. Sounds like he was a little too close to the, the fire and possibly going to reveal information that could have been damning to big companies. And of course we don't want to forget one of the most important heroes in this whole effort to stop Barack Obama, Andrew Breitbart. Andrew Breitbart was uh, found outside of a Westwood restaurant dead. Witnesses said he had a, a, a big band, a red band on his forehead, which is indicative of poisoning, not heart attack. Yet the coroner decided to declare it as a, as a heart attack. The autopsy was, was delivered. The strangest thing about Andrew Breitbart's autopsy report is the guy who filled it out died that very same day of arsenic poisoning. The day he filled out the autopsy report and signed off on it, he died of arsenic poisoning. And the LAPD didn't release that information for two and a half months after that, that coroner died. 
So that is another very big, big question mark. And Andrew Breitbart claimed he had information that would have ended Barack Obama's political career had he been allowed to live long enough, a day longer, to reveal it. The reveal that Breitbart.com put out wasn't really that big of a earth-shaking bit of information uh, compared to what people thought he, he really had about Barack Obama's socialist, communist leanings. So we've got a lot of people here that have been mistakenly, mysteriously dead. But the list goes on. Oh yeah, it's not enough to just talk about just one, one person. Here's Christopher Kelly. Remember Rod, Rod Blagojevich, who's serving time for uh, trying to sell a Senate seat for Barack Obama? Well, Christopher Kelly was Rod Blagojevich's money man and developed all that, that funding that got Rod Blagojevich you know, to the helm of politics. But he also knew a lot about the Chicago-style thug politics that Obama was engaged in. Well, Christopher Kelly, according to the news, was found dead in a trailer of salicylate poisoning, pain painkiller poisoning, pain reliever poisoning. Well, it turns out that he didn't die in that trailer at a lumber yard outside of Chicago. It turns out that he died in the hospital 18 hours later. You look deeper into it and you find out that the story about this guy's death doesn't match the actual death and the autopsy report. But the list goes on. I mean, you think this is it. It continues. There's lots of people out there, many more that I haven't mentioned, that have been essentially dead by suiciding, dead by some sort of a, a method that God knows what else. But the thing that I, I don't want any of us to forget is the worst, the worst tragedy of all of this is that our country has been fighting wars that we haven't won. Our nation has been engaged in battles that we haven't had a clear direction and certainly no exit strategy. And the net loss of all of those battles has been far greater numbers of dead people, not just a few suicides. We're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of coffins. People coming back home. In the middle of the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, this photo was taken by the Seattle Times photographer who lost her job simply by putting it online. The American government doesn't want us to see this. They don't want us to see all the dead people that have died fighting for freedom around the world. This is the unseen that they don't want us to talk about. This is the facts as they are and as they have been revealed over time that war leads to death, the end of life. And what we have today is a two-party system that is pushing for more war. Now, I believe we have a solution. We can end war, but we need and absolutely need a third party to step in and intervene to stop this madness from taking over our country's direction. We as a people do not want war. We as a people would rather have life. We would rather have freedom. We'd rather have a good, solid environment that's safe, clean water, clean air. We as a people want to get this country back on track. We don't need this garbage that these globalists and elitists are pushing on us. And it's been a real problem for a long, long time. And we are not seeing any correction to the course our nation has been on, and I believe a third party can correct it. Some of our ideas involve creating a, a border fence. Not like this, but one with a fence a thousand miles long that would prevent illegals from coming into our country. That would prevent the uh, incessant takedown of our resources, our services, our medical supplies, our medical institution is being threatened by the illegals that are continuing to come into our country at alarming rates. But I can't tell you that this is all going to go away instantly. All I can tell you is that I have a plan to let non-U.S. citizens that are currently in our prison system work at the border building a robust 1,000 mile dual fence that will protect this nation and then they can get their freedom and go home. These are low-level offenders that could easily work for a couple months 
making a few dollars and then we could give them enough to get back to their home country and get out of our prison system. The prison system is warehousing these people at a cost of almost $30 billion a year. That savings alone would help pay for the fence in and of itself. So we need to do something pretty radical to solve a potential threat from down south of the border. Because of the enlarged population in Mexico and South America, the tremendous growth rate down there, we have a serious problem looming. And the reason why our country has been kept so weak is the Democrats want these people in for votes. The Republicans want these people in to exploit their labor. So together, both parties are working in tandem to create weak legislation like the current immigration bill that's ridiculous. 875 pages of nonsense that is now we're seeing a growth of illegal immigrants at the border and the numbers are rising. Three times as many people now trying to pour into the border thinking they're going to get a free ride with Barack Obama. Well, the globalists, the elitists, they want to destabilize our nation any way they can. Bankrupt us, overspend our money, overprint money, give it to all the Wall Street bankers, give nothing to the American people, weaken our border, make our nation into their little pawn so that they can manipulate us and just give us plenty of money for military armament so that we can fight their wars. Well, all of that has got to change, and you, the voter, are the only people that can actually change it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our show every night, 6 to 9, and our anti-war rally on Saturdays from 6 to 9 Pacific Time. I'm David John Sponheim, and I support this message.